Hi there guys, welcome back to Lost Odyssey, it's Chalk and Milk as always, and we're going to be starting in this new secret dungeon, this is the secret cave. Now I had talked to somebody who is actually doing a Lost Odyssey Let's Play like me at the same time, and he was saying that he he preferred to do all the storyline stuff first. Um, my reasoning behind doing the secret cave first is that it's a great place to, to um, get your levels up a little bit, because the enemies in here really are not difficult at this part of the game and I feel that it's great for getting your skills leveled up. Um, it's great storyline development. There's something we're going to find in here that's going to do us wonders in the way of storyline. And I just feel that it's definitely not a difficult area to do at this point. So um, that's my reasoning behind it. And hopefully you guys can follow along. I had I had kind of done, I kind of asked you guys to let me know if you know, you wanted to see all the side questing stuff like this first, or if you wanted to just see all of the main storyline. Um, didn't get a lot of feedback on it, so I just decided to do it in the order that, that I had recorded it in. Um, now, the enemies in here I'm, are pretty much all magical, so you can equip some magical rings to Kaim and Seth. And, uh... Probably physical attackers are better in here because a lot of them are magical, so magic damage usually doesn't do a whole hell of a lot to them, or it's not nearly as effective as using a physical attacker would, so it's completely up to you, it's a matter of preference. Definitely a very manageable area, these enemies really shouldn't give you too much of, of a problem. And there's a seed up there that I missed on the north hand wall there, I missed that, my bad, I'll put an annotation up too. You, you can ram the wall and there's a seed. I don't know why I, I skipped it. I guess I just wasn't thinking when I went through here. But as you can see, I'm not talking much about the dungeon, and I'm sorry, but this is a pretty this is a pretty self-explanatory area. Um, you turn the valves to, to turn the steam off so you can go to the next area. Uh, just making sure to go down every ladder, every single path that you can to get all the chests and treasures and things like that. That purple barrier we're going to have to take care of in a minute. Because we're going to be fighting, I guess not a boss, but just kind of a little tiny mini boss here as soon as we're done looting. And then we can get back to that little barrier there. Very, very tiny area. Really not a whole lot, but um, this is also, this is just an area that's incredibly important for storyline mainly, so... I don't know what this valve does. I always turn it and then I always like look around to see if it does anything, but I can never figure out what it does. I turn stuff anyways, just to be extra super thorough. Now there's also over here, before you go in the door, a little tiny hidden little alcove. The mini-map is your, is your savior sometimes, I swear. There's so much stuff that I miss. If I didn't look at that mini map. Now you can go through the door over here that's actually open to us once you've collected all the treasure here. And this is where Gungora actually sicked, or he, I guess he made those mud creatures uh, for Tolton to fight. You know you get scared way too much, Jordan. When we had control Tolton in the rain when he had, uh, yeah, well, he thought he too. killed Roxian. Oh, very clever. Funny. Yeah. What is your pro What are you, hiding behind your mama? What did you just say? Okay, okay. We go against each other and we play right into Gondora's hands. It looks like something's happening. Okay, so... This is where Gongora has spent a lot of his time, so naturally he has put up a tr uh, like a trap, I guess, or an alarm system, if anybody ever decided to come down here. But this is a pathetic... Very pathetic barrier, if you ask me. And this enemy is very easy to beat. Quite honestly, it's it's time consuming if you don't know what you're doing, but it's quite easy. Now, in the front row, you'll see that there are four dolls, and in, in the back there's a generator. Basically, the generator is going to keep creating dolls for as long as you can stand, essentially. So if you keep destroying the dolls, he'll keep bringing them back. So what you want to do is you want to hit a few of the dolls uh, to make sure that you get the guard condition down a little bit so you can actually cause a little bit of damage to the generator in the back row. 
and then you want to go for the generator. Every time that he generates a doll, I don't think it um, brings up the guard condition. I'll have to see there on the top row. Because I think he, he'll probably summon a few here. Which will make it easier for you to hit him because he'll be summoning more dolls, but they'll, they'll be, if the guard condition doesn't come back, then he still has nothing protecting him technically, so... He's got a few annoying spells like this too, like all sleep. I was apparently not very smart and I didn't put any of my um, status effects or status cures or, you know, all that stuff on my immortals. And as you can see, he's doing it now. He's just going to create a doll. And yeah, the guard condition does not come back. So he can create as many dolls as he wants. Um, he's still not going to be, you know, saved. So it's very easy to idle. He'll probably just, you know, create dolls is his main thing. Uh, he doesn't do any attacks, like physical attacks. And the dolls are going to be the ones that attack you. So you want to get rid of the generator as fast as you can so that once you defeat him, um, the only dolls left standing are the only ones you have to defeat, and then the battle's over. Very self-explanatory. I probably spent way too long explaining that. You're probably like, okay, I get it, I'm not stupid, but... You know. There we go. We rock. Our team one, Gongora, zero. And we get a Backyard Weekly, which is also going to be for another side quest later on. And now we're free to explore Gongora's little area here. Um, there's a few treasures, and this is also where that a very, very important storyline thing comes in. So, once you're done um, looting the place, there's only, like I said, just a few treasures to get in here. There's also a treasure hunt that I forgot. Um, but when, you, when you're done exploring everything, Go up to this little purple uh, glowing ball here and examine it and it's actually a, an audio log and I'm going to shut up because this is incredibly important. I have been sent on a mission. I'm not from this world. However, I've been sent to investigate this world. I have teleported across time and space. My consciousness continued even after I took on a physical form and remains to this day. My home world and this world, for some reason, the two worlds seem to be linked on the same axis across space and time. Our world is becoming extremely unstable. Reports have begun to circulate that it would collapse. We believe this to be caused by interference from another world. This world that was on the same axis as ours. Our pure and tarnished world was being warped and distorted by some unknown force, not unlike a virus distorting a living being. Over the course of time, we realized that this virus could well be a soul or spirit. The interference from that other world was from the souls of its inhabitants. They were producing some form of energy that was distorting our world. Why did it have such an influence? To understand the cause of this phenomenon, to study this interference, we established a quantum teleporter, a means to send our consciousness to this other world. And so we came to investigate. Including myself, there are five investigators. The others are Kai Parganar, Zeph Balmar, Ming Gubara, and Sarah Sisuart. We arrived here without memories of our home world, and now live among the native inhabitants of this world while we carry out our mission. A thousand years was chosen as a time frame sufficient to develop a deep understanding of this world's inhabitants. The way we arrived, with our memories locked away, has allowed us to become like the people we now live among. However, I awoke to the memory of this mission some days ago. I am leaving this recording so that this world may know that I existed. Given that time flows differently on the two worlds, we shall appear to neither age nor die on this world. The thousand years of our investigation is equivalent to the passing of only a single year on our home world. With the 
difference in the flow of time. We live much longer lives than those around us. By immersing ourselves in the history, culture, thoughts, and habits of this world, we succeeded in gathering detailed data. We will transmit our experiences to our home world in the hopes that it will give us the means of saving it. An unexpected result of our mission is that the Tower of Mirrors is causing a variety of odd changes in the natural order of this world. Wild animals run amok, and there are many sightings of monstrous creatures. The natural magic energy of this world has changed. This may in fact be a blessing. Magic energy has dramatically improved the lives of these people. When our consciousness was reconstituted within our new bodies, there was a resonance with the magic energy. The possibility that our existence has imparted even greater strength to this world's magic energy is very likely. We have seen much in our thousand years here, which brings us to the true nature of the virus. The lives and history of the people here are extremely ordinary, and we have seen many dynasties rise to power and fall again into oblivion, as if they were nothing but trivial occurrences. And yet the existence of the virus on our world shows that the events of this world had a tremendous impact, making a history that will never be recorded in any book here. Their feelings that dominate the minds of the people of this world, their hopes and desires, their love and their hatred, their very lives and deaths. The events that bring fear or happiness to their every moment, all of these resulted in massive waves of something that interfered with our home world. The hearts and minds of the people is what moves this world. At certain times, this was evident by the feelings of affection toward others. At other times, it was shown by the unrestrained drive to satisfy a great ambition. In the time we have lived among the people of this world, we have realized that these feelings, previously unknown to us, profoundly affect them. And the effects of these feelings are causing the massive energy waves that are affecting our home world. From our standpoint, these feelings are simply a virus. But in the course of a thousand years, we have found them to be a very seductive virus. While here in this world, I have been infected by the virus of feeling and have consequently attained powerful magic energy. To abandon this would be grievous and painful. shows how deeply the virus has infected me. But the virus's seduction has been quite satisfying. And it still is. All right, so essentially to wrap that all up, people's hearts and lives is what is affecting their home world essentially so their lives events that happen throughout time you know like things that like natural disasters that make them feel pain or fear um, and then other feelings like love and things like that actually uh, is a virus to their home world which is a absolutely bizarre absolutely bizarre um, you know concept and a lot of people ask me about that like oh you know what you know why did they come to this world and that really really very very well explains it so that's why i wanted to come here and, and um do that audio log because it's very very important and uh too bad that gongora was is a jerk because you know when he came here he was a very very smart guy but unfortunately got taken over by the magic energy that he got when he came here when the barrier comes down as you can see you can come back up stairs and we're actually gonna go back up uh, this escalator here because we were up here when we talked to Gungora and we, and we met Jansen for the first time but we didn't actually get to ex explore his study so there's a few things we can we can grab and there's also another audio log that we get to watch as well so there's that chest there and then there's one behind his desk there's something on the desk and then there's this as well which is another audio log here that we can that we can watch eternity is amazing to not have fear of death as long as i am in this world 
I am immortal, akin to a god. I am this world's time and history in one person. However, to remain so, I must destroy the Tower of Mirrors. But if I do, it will break the link to the power of my whole world. And I will lose the magic energy of this world. If that happens, my immortality will be swept along in the flow of time. I need to create a magic energy engine in this world to replace the Tower of Mirrors. An engine would stamp out the interference from my whole world and give me access to even more magic energy here. First, I must establish a power base to ensure that this world runs according to my will, the Royal House of Ura. I can position myself into that house to gain power and manipulate the people. With that power and the magic energy, my place as a god shall be guaranteed! <laughs> So the audio log downstairs was more of when he came to this world and he was more innocent in actually finding out what was wrong. And then once he found out what was wrong, he got taken over by power. Um, so that was kind of how Gongora, you know, got into the royal house and built Grand Staff and things like that. I'm just going to grab this last treasure and that'll be the end of the video. So thank you all so much for joining me and I'm going to have to see you guys next time.